Hey there, I'm going to do a pre-pedal board, mini pedal board build with my son Alex uh, because he's so good at this stuff. And I use, uh, it really I'm not, I don't have a pedal board for, for most live gigs. What I do is I use my Lexicon system and it has 73 effects in it. It's got preamps and distortions and all that stuff. I mean, you've heard it before. Pretty much has everything I need in it, and and if I just go to a pedal board mode, I can add even to the sounds that I have. I can add chorus. I can add delay. Um, I can add wah. So I have all those things I need. But one thing I do add before I have one pedal that I usually use, and that's a sparkle drive, a Voodoo Lab sparkle drive, and I'll, I'll insert a picture of it here so you can see how I have it set up. But basically, I have the four knobs, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. And that just gives me a little bit extra. I kind of use it to brighten up the sound. I kind of use it to just kind of push that, make it sound like more of a loud fender than kind of a direct. See, this is more of a direct sound. It's, it's such a great pedal for just kind of giving it that extra boost. And you can set it multiple different ways. I'm just using it, like I said, as kind of a clean boost to give it that more cranked Fender amp sound. Uh, but also, it comes in handy when I'm playing lead if I want to take a lead sound or a rock sound. To take that, that rhythm sound over the edge, I can hit it on there too. Okay, but what I'm going to do is, I'm, we're, Alex and I are going to pick out four pedals to put on, I've got this. It's, this is the Voodoo Lab, what is this? The Dingbat Tiny. This is the Dingbat Tiny, and it's got enough room for four pedals, okay? It comes with, it, or it doesn't come with, it. You can have it pre-installed. Pre you can have it pre-installed with a four by four, right? X4. X4, sorry, X4. So that's clean power for four pedals right there, all right? And it comes with this great case. It's got. It even comes with all, some of the some of the tools that we'll need to put it together. So, Alex and I are going to put this together, and then we're gonna we're gonna plug it in and try it out. Okay. Okay. So here's the pedal board. Are you recording? Yep. Yeah. And um, so some of the things. So what I want to put on here is stuff that I don't have on my rig. And when I say rig, you can kind of insert the word my pedal board or your pedal board because the idea here is to have a little extra thing that you can bring if, if you don't want to, if your pedal board's already full and you just want to add something in front of it, maybe some gain stuff or whatever, things that are going to be, that'll work at the front of your pedal board. Um, and for sure the sparkle drive is going to be in there. So it's going to be, I think it's the, be the third thing on here because um, the, for sure, the first thing I want to use, I'm going to do a video on this. This thing's an amazing pedal. This this Behringer US 600. It's the Ultra Shifter Harmonist. Uh, this thing has so many for 50 bucks when it came out. It was $49. You, you got so many things it can do. It's just brilliant. It even has a harmonizer so you can cho choose the key and everything. And that's going to be, the, I kind of use it like a whammy pedal. Um, and you can use it in a lot of different ways. But uh, you can even use it, it has a chorus sound in it, right? Detune, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, well, actually, no, we, we weren't going to put this first. Why, why is that? Yeah, okay, so my, my thought was this is a kind of a, you can't tell this, but it's kind of a cheap plastic housing. Um, and I was concerned with the plugging in and out of this constantly to set up this board. So right. I thought, let's put it here where it never really gets touched. Right. As far as getting plugged in and out of constantly and put something like the Keeley where it's got the heavy duty jacks. Yeah, I've got two compressors here to choose from for this pedal board. Um, this is the one that Lyle Workman uses on his pedal board, and so I bought this and I really, really like it. Um, but I really do also like this Keeley, and it's easy enough to ship, you know, swap it out if I need to. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so let's just say the Keeley for now. I think, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, right there. And then I had three other options. This wasn't going to work. I, this is a great pedal, this, this Experience pedal. Uh, this is an awesome pedal, very Hendrixy, and I don't have a sound like this 
in my rig that's great, you know, that I really, really like. Uh, so I thought about that, but it just doesn't fit in here very good. It wouldn't, you know, we could be like all the, it's like look, round bread and, you know, what's with the square sandwich? Well, well, I can't fold the bread. I can't fold the bread. Okay, that was a Spinal Tap reference. Anyway, all right. And then the other option, Alex had this great idea. He said, well, if you wanted to use this as a standalone pedal board, I would have technically two pseudo gain pedals, because if you crank a, a compressor going into a, 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 a gain box, you're going to get more gain. It's going to, you can use it as like a two-stage uh, lead thing. This has kind of a, a, a detuned sound on it, so it can actually um, function as kind of a chorus pedal or flanger or something. And then I, I don't have, obviously my, my lexicon does not have analog delay, and this analog delays are the ones you can actually change the speed. It's like dun 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 dun, you know, that kind of sound. And I thought, oh, that would be really fun to be able to have that every now and then. So that's what I was thinking. It's either that or this uh, JHS modded DS1, and this is called a synth drive. And this definitely 100% has sounds that I don't have in my Lexicon rig. Uh, and so I think we're going to go with this, but I can, if I want to take this out on a road fly trip, I can swap it out easy enough with that. And if I want to change the compressor, I can easily do that. And so I think this is where we're going to, this is where we're going to start right here. That's going to be our pedal board, right? Yeah, looks good to me. Okay, so what's the next step? Uh, let's put Velcro on the board so we can kind of get everything set and then put Velcro on the pedal so we can get everything kind of locked down. Okay, so scissors. Okay, so what else comes in here? The, the uh, cables for the power. Four of those for four pedals. This is the main power. And what kind of end is this, Alex? What's that? I don't know what that end is actually re referred to as. I mean, it's not an IEC. No, it's not. Uh, so it's, but it's... Great, because you know, in a lot of ways, you'll like immediately know. Oh, this is the only thing. I mean, I've seen this kind of plug for like camcorders. You yeah, know? <laughs> they're everywhere. You can find them pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can find them. Uh, one of the best things about the X4 is that it is international because of this. You oh, can okay. you can take this and just if you have an adapter to get it to 220, this will run. Oh, that. that's great. Okay, so the, it yeah. does the transformer and all that stuff. Right, so it's so. technically an international supply. That's huge. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna open up some folks. sure that none of these pedals have batteries in them because um, it's going to be on a pedal board for a very very long time and it's it's got power supply so I don't need batteries so um, what will happen over time is batteries will bleed see this battery will eventually get old and start bleeding and could destroy the pedal so just a thought so it's a good thought here's another quick trick thanks son <laughs> thanks son here's another quick trick so I usually like to measure a strip of Velcro to the back of the pedal, and then what I'll do to conserve Velcro is cut this in half because you really don't need all that much, yeah, and then apply one half to the top, one half to the bottom. It should be good. Oh, see, I, I did too much. Yeah. Well, and the other downside of something doing it that way mm -hmm. can be that if the pedal has gaps in the back, that ga that air gap will allow the Velcro to peel. And then um, this pedal has little. Are those dip switches or dim switches? Or dip switches, yeah. Dip switches, see those? And so you have to be real careful. You don't want to step on those or you'll break them right off. So I want to make sure that it's not too close to the edge. I want to move this one over a little bit. And I want to be able to access the pedal, the, the switches too. So I think we're I think we're good. Yeah. That's enough room for a cable. Right? Okay, now for cabling, uh, we're going to use my favorite cables for pedal board, or George George L's cables, they're the best. And um, I wouldn't use George L's necessarily for my long cables, for the guitar to pedal board and pedal board to amp cables. However, 
uh, for the short stuff, they're just great because you can, they, they basically, you know, these right angle ones you can make without a tool. You can, oh, well, I guess you do need a tool. You need wire cutters. Or uh, you can do it with scissors. So. Oh, that's true. You could you could literally make cables with a scissor. Which that's part of why I use George Ellis too. Is when I was, not like out on the road and a cable dies, you can easily make a cable oh, yeah. with scissors. So easy. And basically the 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 thing here is I'm going to clip off the end of this, so I've got a fresh yep. bit of cable. I'm just clipping off like a half an inch of this. Oh, no, maybe not. Yeah, that's the wrong. Here, use scissors. Look at that. It's even better. Scissors okay. work great for this. Okay, so with the George Ellis, with the right angle ones, you just basically shove the cable down in there, like that, and then you bend it, and then you screw on the cap, and the cap makes a connection on the outside, and the inside of the cable has already made a connection in the, in the, inside the sleeve. So they're totally functional cable, freaking brilliant. Okay, so now, we, and, and the great thing is you can cut these to the exact length you need. So what should we do, power these up next? Um, it's, yeah, you can, we can either go power next or we can go audio cables next. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't, it doesn't really, really matter, matter now. Okay, okay, so that first cable I made, right, let's put it here. And so it's going to go on the Keeley. It's crazy. So this, this $50 pedal has a, an expression control pedal input on it as well, and stereo outs. Um, Fifty dollars. So there is one thing. When I was talking to the oh, is there a battery in this? No. Okay. No. Okay. It's it's DSP, I think. Oh, okay. okay. No higher current. Um. So, one of the things I was at George L. at their booth at NAM last year, and I, I, I don't. I was just talking to them about building their cables because I was asking opinions or like advice, like sucking finger, um, asking for opinions and advice on building their cables. Uh, and they gave me gave me an interesting one that I didn't know about. So when you cut the cable, obviously I'm going to cut it with a little extra length, not much, but just enough that let's say this cable dies mm -hmm. on t on the road, I don't need more cable. I can literally just cut a little bit off. Oh, right, right. So that's one thing they were like, do that. So I'm going to give myself a little more length than I need. Like so, let's see. And the other thing they told me to do was when you once you insert the cable. Bend it over just enough to get the first thread started, and then let the threading do the work. Oh, so, like, okay. don't bend it all right. over. Right, you're right because then you get too far away from it. Right. So now I got the first yeah. threading started. Yeah. And just go like that, tighten it down. Man, if right. you do a whole board of these, I love George Ells, but if you do a whole board with George Ells, your fingers are gonna be raw. <laughs> it's brutal. I did a 12 pedal board send and return loop effect effect loop board. <laughs> yeah. So that's 24 cables. <laughs> Not fun. So there's two so far. Looking Pretty clean. clean. Very. Yep. But when I'm building bigger pedal boards, what I like to do is have a small little solid state amp next to me. Like a, even like one of those True. little like yeah. practice fender toy amps. Two. True. That you can plug in the cable and just tap it and make sure it's sending signal. So that you're not building all these, like if you're building a, a pedal board with 24 cables in it, the odds of, <laughs> of having a bad cable and then having to find it yeah. are not really fun. Yeah, you, you're, you're definitely going to probably have one that didn't quite work. Right. Okay, I went ahead and used a different cable for this because that one was the thicker cable and for some reason it wasn't going in very easily. Ah, uh, I see. And so that does hurt. Okay, so go ahead and plug that one in and I'll take cool. this end off. So now we're doing power. Okay, so um, for this build, it looks like everything is standard, uh, standard power connectors, which works Right now. Okay. <clears throat> oh, do we need to do any of the cable tie stuff now, or uh, no, no after? Right? Nope, after. Yeah, I'm gonna use that for power. Okay, so there's two two different lengths of cables. Yep. So, yeah, I mean it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna use the two longer ones to go to the two outside pedals, right. two shorter ones to go to the inside pedals. Yep. Or sometimes not if there's if you have to do a weird run, it's, you use them how you see fit. Uh, but it's for the standard power connectors. I'm going to use all the right angles on the pedal ends and all the straight ones coming out at the bottom of the X4. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, then it also comes with these uh, four-way cable tie holders, I think is what they're called. There's, yeah. there's actually a name for them. And then little cable ties. So we're going to just use that to keep everything clean beneath the board. 
and let's wire this thing up. zip ties and cable ties, but the way we have everything routed looks really clean. I mean, I can show you the underside of the board and it's, yeah. there's really no need for any cable ties, no. so I wouldn't like, here we'll get a little close up here. Up to, there's really no need to cable tie any of this because again, it's a mini, mini pedal board. You're probably gonna wanna change a lot of this. As you go, you'll go, oh, I wanna use this today. I wanna use that today. And if everything's cable tied down, it just makes it more difficult. So if it looks this clean and it really isn't getting in the way, yeah, I this is we just leave it. definitely an easier pedal board to swap out pedals on than your, the main one. Yeah. You know, especially with loopers and everything. I have this exact same mini board and power supply and I'm constantly switching out pedals. In fact, I was going to use it today. Yeah. So, okay. So we're going to clean up and uh, we're going to, we're going to clean up. Oh. Yeah. We're going to clean up and power it up and we'll listen to it. See what we got. Okay. Cool. So here's my, my basic clean sound. We got the pedal board working, we know, because all the lights come on when I hit them. All right. So, uh, first thing is the Keeley. Yeah. It's going to be fun having a compressor I can throw in here. And the reason I wasn't using the compressor largely on my Lexicon was because I was putting the sparkle drive in front of it, and it was just getting too squishy. Okay, this is that Ultra Harmonizer. I'm going to do a video about this. It does so many, so many crazy things. Like right now, it's on uh, lat, uh, latch mode. Uh, that is like a trim bar, I think is what it's called. Yeah, but it, the mode, the, the momentary, pedal, momentary mode. Yeah, latch is when it's on or off. Uh, momentary is when it's on if you hold it down. all the way down. It's like a whammy bar, but it goes exactly down an octave. So that's kind of fun. Um, all right, so what else do we have here? You know, so I've got this, my Coldplay. And I love to add a little sparkle drive to that. So now I got the sparkle drive right there. get the idea and then this thing is the crazy go with a clean sound basically it's just a cow fart generator it sounds like Jack White like I said cow fart generator <laughs> <laughs> oh. switches and I don't know what any of them do and I just I think there's actually a mode where it's just a DS2 but it's kind of got a fuzz sound but it's called a synth drive That's crazy. But it's fun to have these just in front of my rig because I've got all my sounds I need. I got my delays and chorus and everything. There we go. The pre pedal board mini pedal board bill <laughs> that's the what we just did so anyway check it out uh, get you know get your pedal board together and uh and then you decide oh man i wish i had this pedal and this pedal on it well you can do it you can this is just a great way to add a couple pedals to uh to your main to your main rig all right god bless you guys i'll talk to you soon uh -huh.